The second half of 2019 was dominated by a busy release cycle of numerous 2020 Pure Sport UTVs. Manufacturers like Can-Am dropped big horsepower updates and Honda jumped into the technology race with the addition of the Fox Live Valve models. We also saw the evolution of the Polaris Razor platform with the release of the 2020 Razor Pro XP. In September of 2019, we were presented with Kawasaki's first attempt into the Pure Sport side-by-side -side market, the Terex KRX 1000. Today we are taking our first look at the KRX and going over all of its specs and features. With the 2021 KRX models soon hitting the market, we'll see if the Kawasaki's freshman attempt is something worth investing in. This video is sponsored by Westside Motorsports, the Northwest's leader in power sports sales, service, and accessories. With hundreds of units on site, you can get hands-on experience with the widest model ranges of UTVs and ATVs from Polaris, Can-Am, Honda, Kawasaki, and Yamaha. With recently expanded service bays and dedicated wheel shop, certified Westside technicians can quickly service your OEM warranty, perform maintenance, or even install your aftermarket accessories. Westside Motorsports is also a leader in sales and service of motorcycles, snowmobiles, and personal watercraft from brands including Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, BMW, W, Ducati, BRP, Polaris, and more. Located just off of exit 276 in Spokane, Washington, you can test drive the latest new side-by-side -side models on Westside's 10-acre test track. Visit Westside Motorsports Tuesday through Saturday or view their available inventory online at westsideracing.com. This is the 2020 Kawasaki Terex KRX 1000 a complete rethink of what a Terex could and should be. While the KRX also launched in a white color variant, the very first thing you'll notice about the KRX is the abundance of Kawasaki lime green. I can't remember a time when a model release from a manufacturer screamed that manufacturer so loudly. Even Honda's release of the red Talon did not really scream Honda like this lime screams Kawasaki. Combine exaggerated body lines with what can only be called the industry's best looking front end, the KRX is truly striking and we love it. At 130.1 inches long, 68.1 inches wide, and 75 inches tall, the Terex KRX 1000 is 5 inches longer than a Polaris Pro XP and 7.5 inches taller than a Can-Am Maverick X3. With a wheelbase of 98.8 inches, the KRX stance is 11.2 inches longer than the Honda Talon 1000X. This machine is a beast with a wet weight just under 1,900 pounds, almost 100 pounds more than the Can-Am Maverick or the Polaris Pro XP, and 400 pounds more than the Honda Talon. What you don't really understand from the specs on paper is just how much presence the KRX has next to other UTVs. The high doors, large open wheel wells, and aggressive styling all contribute to a big and tall package that you honestly have to stand in front of to appreciate. The 2020 KRX 1000 comes stock with eight ply rated Maxxis Carnivore 31x10 R15 tires. Kawasaki includes 15x7 52 offset aluminum alloy beadlock wheels featuring lime green beadlock rings white if you have the white model. While Kawasaki could have gone full-blown 32 or 33 inch tires, going with a 31 inch tire provides a planted foundation and contributes to the KRX's 14.4 inches of ground clearance. Hidden within the beadlock wheels are a full set of hydraulic disc brakes with single piston calibers in the rear and dual pistons in the front. Wheel scrapers and electronic power steering is also included. Linking the wheels to the chassis, the KRX brings the beef with thick, high clearance reinforced A-arms and boxed rear trailing arms. Now that the KRX has been in the hands of consumers for over six months, consumers have found a weak point in the cast knuckles holding the ball joints. These also act as the steering stops against the lower A-arms. These cast parts were too thin and would fail under hard impacts. Kawasaki has already begun the recall process on these parts and any new model going out to dealerships will have these updated parts. Additional protection of the chassis comes by way of a full-length UHMW skid plate with key components like batteries protected by steel plates. Buyers coming from the Polaris Razor world will appreciate the steel front wheel well guards stopping rocks and debris, including tree limbs, from compromising the firewall and your safety. While the rear of the Kawasaki suspension may look like familiar dual radius rod setups of competitors, it actually does feature a third arm in front of the hub to create a four point rear linkage helping reduce toe-in during droop. This is a huge benefit to tail end stability during impacts and drifting. The KRX ships with Fox's Podium 2.5 inch internal bypass coilover shocks featuring 24 positions of low-speed compression adjustment clickers. These industry-proven shocks have also been given stainless steel sleeving for enhanced durability while articulating the high and low-speed springs. Unfortunately, these springs are a custom diameter and upgrades down the road may require special ordered springs. Currently, shops like Shock Therapy are only doing them in-house and at-home upgrade kits are slowly being developed. 
to assist in high-speed maneuvering, front and rear sway bars are present. Driving the KRX through the bumps and the chatter was almost like driving a Cadillac, and a joy to drive. One reason is due to the negative camber provided by the shorter upper control arms in the front and the back. These provide less wheel scrub and better traction throughout the suspension's travel. We did not have an opportunity to really push the KRX to the limits on our backwood trails or the dune whoops, but this setup is competent enough for the majority of drivers out there. In the rear left wheel, you'll also find something that other UTVs rarely have, a parking brake. This is a manual lever, just like you would experience in a standard automobile. Why? Because the Kawasaki KRX only has a four-way shifter, high, low, neutral, and reverse. The KRX has a two-speed transmission and is married to the engine by the way of a CVT clutch. The clutch belt is longer and thicker than most common UTVs on the market, similar to the Articat Wildcat XX and forthcoming Speed UTV line of vehicles. The primary clutch features four large flyweights and combined with a near 3 to 1 CVT ratio, engagement of the stock clutch is just about the smoothest we have ever felt in the UTV industry. The KRX 1000 features a naturally aspirated 999cc 8-valve four-stroke parallel twin Kawasaki motor with a dual overhead cam and a large front-mounted radiator. Kawasaki hasn't published horsepower numbers, but applications to the California Emissions Councils calculate it to around 112 horsepower at the flywheel. These numbers are right in line with other competitors like the 110 horsepower Polaris Razor XP1000. This powertrain is very smooth sounding and is complemented by a very smooth power ramp on the throttle by wire system. The power delivery between hammering the throttle and feeling put back into your seat is very smooth and might be a little bit too smooth for any high adrenaline seeking drivers. We would venture to say that it's perfect for a family rig or a rock crawling enthusiast. An interesting touch on this motor is that Kawasaki has chosen to include a sight glass on the oil pan. From the side of the motor, you can visually see the oil level and clarity without ever pulling a dipstick. This is a great usability feature until you visit the KRX forums. You'll quickly learn that this extra bit of knowledge has spurred a whole new repetitive discussion around oil color, air bubbles, viscosity, and more. One thing that we noticed looking around the engine bay is that there's no excessive wiring or cabling being exposed. The KRX 1000 has almost all of its loose wiring and cabling neatly tucked away from any exposure to abuse. The short pipe exhaust on the KRX 1000 motor is side mounted and reminds us of the Kawasaki Moto and MX style systems. The muffler has a very tinny sound to it and we found the exhaust note to be a little bit raspy and at high RPMs this exhaust note could become fatiguing to some riders. Luckily, there's a large number of third-party slip-on exhausts now available for the KRX 1000. Just above the motor and looking at the bed of the KRX 1000, you'll find spacious accommodations for most coolers and gear. You'll also notice that there's a curved shape to the front of the bed to accommodate an OEM spec 3110 R15 spare tire and wheel. The bed unit feels sturdy and well-supported even while standing on it. Kawasaki has a large number of OEM accessories to finish off the functionality of the KRX bed, including tailgates, elevated tire racks, and more. The front hood is easily removed with two turnstile latches, but doesn't really reveal much other than the shock mounts and the fluid reservoirs. Below the passenger side door, you'll find the KRX tethered gas cap. Getting into the KRX 1000 is a pleasure with the inclusion of exterior door handles and full length front hinged half doors. By far, we found the KRX 1000 is one of the easiest UTVs on the market to get in and out of as long as height is not an issue for you. The doors feel solid and well built with inner door skins that feature armrests, interior door latches, and bottle holders on the passenger side. Moving into the cabin of the KRX, one of the first things that we noticed was the simple amount of usable space behind the seats. With the seats all the way back, you still have a usable 6 to 8 inches of space for storage. With the seats in the forward position, you could fit a small cooler or multiple toolboxes, something many trail riders will love. The Kawasaki KRX 1000 OEM seats are by far the most comfortable seats we have sat in. The grippy cover material is more like what you would see on a dirt bike rather than a UTV. The cushion material is a rubbery compound which is much more supportive than other OEM foam padding. These seats provided excellent support and all day comfort, even for us big guys. The bottom seat cushion comes out with a simple quick release, revealing the battery box and the fuses on the driver's side. But the backrest is mounted to the seat frame and requires unbolting to be removed. This is unfortunate for Kawasaki considering that the large amount of storage space behind the seats will have to be accessed by reaching around or over the seats to get to. The KRX's driver position starts with a moderately large and comfortable steering wheel featuring tilt adjustment and an attached digital gauge cluster. This cluster has all the standard appointments including a rare and very useful CVT belt temperature gauge. 
The only two toggle switches on the KRX are for your headlights and LPM, low power mode. LPM electronically reduces your throttle range to 57% and smooths out any throttle drift caused by bumps or rock crawling. Next to the ignition key, there's a rotary dial to select between two wheel, four wheel, and four wheel plus diff lock. There are an additional two blank switch mounts to the left of the steering wheel and additional five blank switch mounts on the center console. The center console features a large cubby that can be used to store your phone or handheld device at low speeds, but it's intended to house the optional head unit for the Hyphonic stereo system. Above the cubby is another latching storage area that really only has enough space for a set of sunglasses or a wallet or other small items that lay flat. The glove box is somewhat smaller than other models on the market. One thing to note is that the glove box door shuts with a pressure pin, not a latch. And we found that on rough terrain, the glove box door would become loose. The Kawasaki was a pleasure to drive. It's comfortable, spacious, and handles well. The KRX does have a high center of gravity and does have prominent body roll. This would be one UTV that we would not recommend disconnecting sway bars in any situation other than rock crawling. The KRX motor has proven to be swift and strong, but in our limited testing, does not get there fast. The best way we can explain it is like a super long turbo lag. You build up power slowly until you're about halfway up in the RPMs, and then it takes off like a smooth rocket. The key point here is smooth. The KRX never felt jerky or over anxious to get going. At speed, the KRX handles well with very subtle steering feedback. Some drivers may find this a little bit too squishy feeling and not responsive enough. Others might find this relaxing and enjoyable. We never push the KRX off large jumps, but we can tell you that its jump characteristics are a wonderful boaty feeling. This machine can jump if you want it to, but it's best at cruising the trails. Cornering at high speeds in the KRX is a little bit nerve wracking if you're coming from any other sport side by side. The high center of gravity, body roll, and floaty steering can reduce your confidence going into sharp corners. Most drivers will find themselves slowing down on anything other than a moderate sweep. The Fox Podium shocks really come in handy with their 24 click adjustments, but with the weight and the height of the KRX, we believe most drivers will have their machines clicked to the stiffer positions most of the time. Anything under about 10 clicks from full firm was a little bit too plush for our liking, but would be great if you were just out enjoying the scenery at moderate speeds. Kawasaki obviously did their homework in designing and building the KRX 1000. This platform has huge potential in the years to come. Kawasaki knows their customer base. They know the expectations of their fans and have delivered on all fronts. The KRX 1000 engine platform has huge potential for big power gains, and knowing that Kawasaki has a supercharged lineup of motorcycles in the wing, we feel that it's only a matter of time that they are the first to come to the market with an OEM supercharged option. With the throttle by wire being computer controlled, we also expect Kawasaki to provide future model releases with more power and more aggressive throttle response. The general consensus in the KRX community of owners is that these are great machines with almost zero issues. The only issues are already being addressed by Kawasaki. The front knuckle A-arms have been replaced, and the gas tank pressure issues that some have experienced have been remedied with a $5 rollover valve install that anybody can do. Most people are extremely happy with their investments and are already building large mud machines, killer portaled rock crawlers, and capable trail machines. We have zero reservations recommending the 2020 KRX 1000 to any potential buyer looking for a smooth, comfortable, and capable machine, as long as you're not planning on racing or tearing up the dunes. Every potential buyer should know about the potential for body roll in these machines and the Cadillac feel and driving experience. The driving experience is not going to be the same as a Can-Am Maverick X3, it's not going to be the same as a Polaris Pro Turbo, it's not going to be the same as a Honda Talon. This is a very different machine than everything out there, it is very comfortable, it is very plush, and if that's the driving experience you're looking for, this is the perfect match for you. Now as of publishing this first look video, Kawasaki is in the middle of releasing their expanded KRX lineup for the 2021 model year, and we are excited to see what they come out with. So far we've only seen new colors for the two-seaters, but the rumor is that there's going to be more seats and more power. So stay tuned to the side-by-side -side guys, we'll keep you informed on all the news and releases from Kawasaki and all other UTV related information. Again, we want to do a large thank you to Westside Motorsports for sponsoring this video. They provided us access to the machines and time and space to test drive them. So if you're in the Inland Northwest and you are looking to buy a KRX 1000, contact Westside Motorsports at westsideracing.com. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and the information that we're bringing to you, please give us a subscribe and hit that notification bell down below. Every time you hit the subscribe or like button, it helps us reach our goal of informing and educating the community about the latest UTV information, news, gear, and accessories. We thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in seeing more of them, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.